What's up everyone, Tyler here and I'm back with another video. Last video, you guys saw me get the PBM angle kit. It is something that I wanted for a really long time. Now that I have it, I could work out the kinks and show you guys what kinda goes wrong. First off, you guys may be wondering why I'm in Gina right now. I want to show you guys how it is to drive first when you get the PBM angle kit. Go around the block, make some U-turns. This is with traction off. Gotta get out this driveway. It sucks like always. Don't mind all that, that's just me scraping, rubbing, all that. You're gonna be making your first U-turn in the PBM angle kit. All right, I'm gonna go into it first for this. Hopefully it does it, but usually when I record, it always never does what I want. Right now. Okay, it didn't do it, great. I'm gonna be making U-turns until it does it. Oh, okay, there you go. It kind of did it there, but it didn't lock up the brakes or anything. It just put on the slip light. Oh, okay, there you go. Oh. Right there, what it did, it kind of locked the brakes for me or something to do with ABS or traction control. It was weird. Essentially, what I'm trying to get at is that it kind of thinks that it's out of control or something. And I feel the car trying to control itself and stop me from controlling. Usually when I make those U-turns, it happened maybe like four times already. I'm trying to have no traction control at all. I did a little bit of research and it said uh, unplug the G sensor, which seems pretty easy. I'm not gonna unplug any fuses like that for ABS to be able to do a burnout because I don't think I really want to. First things first, I have to take off all these interior pieces to get to the sensor, which is probably around here. This is my shift knob. Someone made it. I'm not really too sure who. I needed an adapter to use it though. Okay. This piece was pretty easy to get off. Don't think you should have a problem with that. Pop this off, you pop. Oh, oh. Pop that off. This is up. Oh, wow. You just gotta pull hard enough. I swear this in one clip is getting me sweaty. I think it's worthy to show you guys me struggling. After a lot of time, effort, and daylight, I finally got the plug unplugged and I'm getting a call. Hold on. Yeah. Hey, hey what, what time are you freedom? Are you vlogging? <laughs> what, is a vlog? Yeah. Up tomorrow. Back to what I was doing with less light. I'm just gonna unplug this sensor and test out if it actually works. I'm gonna test to see if it works. And from the looks of it, the slip and VDC is on. Or off, I meant. I'll go around and drive it to see if it actually works. Yeah, these two lights are always gonna be on. If you're wondering, I really don't mind. I just don't want to be pushing this button over and over. Yep. Seems to turn good with no issues. All the way locked. Good. Since it is nighttime, I'm going to catch you guys in the next morning. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Well, if you don't know, this is Marcus, and he has the best fitment in the game. <laughs> I don't. We're back with another day because it got dark yesterday. Right side is way higher. I think by a quarter inch, so I'm gonna go lower a quarter inch here, see what happens, because I think from being lower here, my fender got pushed out. I'm gonna get Marcus to just turn the wheel right. Turn it right. I wanna just see. Okay, I'm good. Woo. Look at it. 
We're gonna go to a flat service now and see where how it all sits. Here's a dip. Oh, right. oh this is where you go. Usually right here it's pretty flat. It's like right about in there. It's about equal, actually. Do you think so? Yeah. Hell yeah! Oh my god. Yeah, because the other side, yesterday was like so hot. Everything's basically done. I'm just waiting on tires. I'll get to that in the next video. We're gonna go see Marcus's car on a flat surface because my driveway is so uneven. It's really bad to do adjustments there. Oh my god, dude, your mud guard. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I need more zip ties. All right. yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look cleaner on camera. <laughs> I want to show you guys the suspension as a whole right now. Since I have the car jacked up, it's easier to show you guys what I have. Those are the new ISR control arms. I don't think anyone really is running those arms at the moment, at least on YouTube, I haven't seen. But they are nice arms because all you need is a 19 to adjust either to go in and out. That acts as my spacer, I guess you could say. Here you could see how the suspension is really extended far out. I didn't want to get a collar to make sure that doesn't bend where the threads are because I'd rather have that or the tie rod as a weak point instead of the actual arm because to replace that, that's so not worth it, like another thousand. As you all know, I did this at home. It was fairly easy. I guess the only difficult part was the tie rod, I'm gonna turn the wheel for you guys. Ooh. That should be full lock, but as you can see right there, the rack offset spacer, that was kind of tricky to put on. So how I put it on was the opposite way of that. I used that to be able to tighten the actual tie rod because you really can't do it. Um, with it on the car like that. Actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> okay, realizing this after the fact, turn the wheel all the way to um, the opposite side where you want it to extend out and you could tighten it like that instead of doing what I did. I know I'm talking a lot, but I just wanna give you guys all these tips and if you actually get these arms because there's not really a lot out there and I feel like this could help. At first when I was aligning this thing, I was taking off the tie rod from uh, this bracket but you actually don't need to do that you just need to loosen these two lock nuts and turn the actual tie rod so to either extend it or shorten it i was thinking you would need to turn this and its reverse thread and either it'll extend it or shorten it but that was not the case since we are here too the caster adjustment is right there you do not need to take this bracket off this adjustment's pretty interesting i'll let you guys find that out for yourself i was really intrigued how easy it was for me to adjust okay so this adjustment right here is for the track with in order to adjust that you need to take the arm out and down to twist it i don't think i showed you guys this either how the bump stop works it's just a bolt and a nut have it to where you want the wheel to stop turning and it'll hit this bracket right there to stop your wheel from moving. It's amazing how customizable these arms are and I'd much rather have it than the stock arms. I'm gonna show you guys on this side where my wheel stops. It is actually pretty close to the strut. I have the uh, brake line bracket on the strut to where it won't really hit it. Yeah, if you have no bump stop, your wheel or caliper will hit your strut. That's mostly it for down here. Just wanted to show you guys a closer look at what you can do at home. If you have the tools, this is possible. Don't worry about it. The only thing that you had to like grind down was all the way over there. If you guys could see that, not even 
as bad as I expected. Yeah, it's looking pretty legit down here. Right, that's pretty much all for this video. I just wanted to work out some kinks after installing the PBM lower angle kit and everything works smoothly and you gotta see my friend Mark Siskar. Go check his Instagram out. I'll link it down in the bio. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next video.